All right, everyone, the Pope is warning against an invasion of libertarians. Oh, no, libertarians at all rungs of society, they're going to take over. And they're going to stop people from being poor by getting rid of all the uh, moral abuse and all the crazy-ass shit that authoritarians like the Pope like to pile on to society. The Pope is one to talk when it comes to uh, screwing people over. Look at the history of the Catholic Church, number one, and then look at what it does today. The Catholic Church pretends to be high and mighty. It's like the Pope. That position is supposedly filled by someone who's wise in, in both an academic and spiritual sense. Never before has such an idiot goofball held that position. And there have been some really weird popes. Think of the joust of the whores, or that one pope there who was in bed uh, with some dude's wife, and the dude uh, smashed his skull with a crab hammer, something like that. There have been some uh, really, truly retarded popes over time, but Pope Francis is uh, getting pretty close. And this is, uh, when I say pope, I mean Catholic pope. Not my pope. Not my papa, not going to lead me. He's just a theocrat and an authoritarian. Of course he hates libertarianism. And the corporate entities, by the way, that the Catholic Church owns, they own motels, they own publishing firms, they own a little bit of everything. They even own a gay bathhouse in Italy. Um, I, I think it's actually still open. Someone exposed that a while ago. They own the publishing house that produces the Satanic Bible. Did you know that? Yeah. What a, what a high and mighty Christian order they are. No, they just want money. Then they launder it, and they bundle it, and send it to the Western world, and they fund politicians here. In any state where it's legal to, for a religious body to directly fund politics, they do so. If it's not legal for them to do so, if they have to do it indirectly, they just do it through uh, various shadowy entities, through slush funds and things. It's been going on for a long time. Of course the Pope loves neoliberals and neocons, which are the same thing. Neoconservatives, like the Bill O'Reilly's and Glenn Beck's, the, the washed out, jaded legacy media figures and stuff, they're just neoliberals with a smiley face. That's all that they are. And, and the so-called leftists, they're like, oh, anti-war, oh, we shouldn't throw people in jail for pot. Yeah, it's like two moral issues that you actually have some sense on. Everything else, you could just be a neoconservative, you'd be the same thing. Oh, yeah, and you want more tax money to spend on useless crap that doesn't help anyone. The Pope should look around at this world and ask, are the neoliberal interventionist policies that he apparently favors helping people or hurting them? Are people doing better than they were 50 years ago or worse? They're doing worse. The more strangulation we get, the worse off people are. But here's the key. The Catholic Church loves the poor. They love them so much that they want to make more poor people because poor people are reliant upon religious charities often in the third world. They don't want the third world to develop. They don't want it to develop, then people will lose their religion because they won't have to beg for handouts from the Catholic Church anymore. They don't want the, they don't want uh, Western Africa to advance. They don't want the Philippines to be better off or Latin America. They want them to be worse off. They want them to collapse outright so people have to take sanctuary in their churches and go into a bread line or something. Establishment politicians do the same. Uh, generally speaking, it's not in their best interest for uh, a bunch of poor people to stop being poor makes it harder to control them. They'll have enough leisure time to occasionally protest. They'll, they'll get more educated. They'll know what's going on. They'll start forsaking the corporate media. They'll start abandoning corporate religion, which is what Catholicism is. Catholicism and political Zionism and Saudi-backed sort of Wahhabi Sunni Islam are all political fronts. That's all they are. They're money-making political endeavors. That's why they get along, by the way. When the Pope says, oh, yeah, I'm going to meet with, with this cleric, it's not going to be a truly religious cleric he's meeting with. That's not what happens. It's, it's, not, it's not even truly really... Ze zealots are just the useful idiots of the political side of Islam. The same as like some, some group of Catholic zealots centuries ago were the useful idiots for the, the ultimately the land-holding corporate endeavors of Catholicism. Why do you think they purged the Knights Templar? The Templars had too much land, they had too much political sway, they had too much productivity. Catholic Church couldn't deal with it anymore. They didn't want the Templars to be more powerful than them and eventually displace them. It's a political movement. It's all it's ever been. The Pope's just a theocrat. He's the head of state of Vatican City. He is the leader of what essentially boils down to a more or less sovereign nation. Why should I care about his opinion of Western politics? By the way, the classical liberalism that directly informs modern libertarianism is the reason why Catholics can openly practice today. They were discriminated against quite heavily when they first started arriving. Most of the people in the U.S. 
what became the U.S. were Protestants. The Catholic minority was discriminated against. <clears throat> the uh, essence of classical liberalism, then interpreted by our legal system, lifted them out of discrimination. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that there would have been some Protestant founders back then, if they knew what the Pope was doing to our political system today, trying to constantly perturb it, trying to weigh in on every matter in the Western world, probably wouldn't have put those in the Constitution. The Pope's just a crazy old man, just a fool in a robe. That's all he is and that's all he'll ever be. The fact that he knows how to use a smartphone and says, oh yeah, let me wash the feet of this leper, let me hang out with these poor people, give them a bag of rice or something, that doesn't, make, that doesn't give him humility. It doesn't make him some, some great, less sinful creature with great ideas. It just makes him a human being who's good at PR. That's all the Pope is. He's a Marxist. He's a fiscal Marxist who wants more and more government control over people because those same people within government he funds. And he gets some kickbacks out of it. The Catholic Church does this all the time and they always have. It's a corrupt edifice. It's a <clears throat> In that sense, some of the more zealot Protestants who say, oh, the Catholic Church is the Antichrist. Well, you're, you're like a quarter right. There is no Antichrist. Never will exist never can exist because there was no Christ to begin with. You're already free of your sins. But insofar as the Catholic Church at the Vatican level is just a political entity and a, and a corporate entity, yeah, you're basically right. Yeah, by, by your religious standards, they are basically the Antichrist. But you've got to roll that up again <laughs> with these other groups. Some of the, the more Zionistic uh, Judaists, certainly some of the more fervent, politically active uh, Islamists in the world, and certain other groups too. You think about maybe the, the mafioso side of the orthodoxy or something like that, and these groups pretend to fight one another. But lately, uh, they've been sort of gathering together under one money-making banner. It's not for world peace that they're doing this. It's not to better the lots of the same poor people that they need to exist to keep existing themselves. Trust me, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with control and money and things like that. No, the Pope is corrupt. Yeah, by his own uh, dogmatic standards, he's a total sinner. And, and he would go to hell, essentially, according to a proper interpretation of Christianity. Why is anybody listening to this old man? Why would anybody in the United States, where we supposedly have separation of church and state, care about what the leader of a foreign theocratic entity thinks? One that corrupts our government even further than it corrupts itself on a regular basis. Why should I care what he thinks about liberty? Oh, he's anti-freedom. Okay. Yeah, but no shit. A theocrat is against the concept of human liberty. Oh, I'm so surprised. Yeah, I'm shocked. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. It's, it's no different from if some Saudi royal comes out, being a theocrat, controlling Mecca and so forth, and says, oh, well, human rights? What are those? People should live by, by the book. Uh, they need to be moral and follow these laws because some dead god said so or something like that. It's the same thing to the point where uh, the Catholics that want, on some moral issues generally are more tolerable. Uh, I have to end up siding with a bunch of total zealot Protestants that, uh, that say fire and brimstone and think I'm also going to roast in hell. Yeah, by their, uh, by their standards, I'll be, uh, you know, with the Pope in hell at some point. That's, that's okay. I don't believe in their mythology. But you should aim more criticism at the Pope. Somebody needs to do it. Because a lot of people have this weird fawning adoration from, oh, El Papa, El Papa. He's not your Papa. You have your own Papa. He, he didn't impregnate your mother, I would assume. Maybe uh, in his wild party days. Okay. Maybe. You know, maybe he got around a little bit. But he talks, oh, I've got one long and I wrote this booklet about, you know, the catechism or something. Who cares? Who cares what you did? You don't, you know, obviously either don't know anything about libertarianism or you're trying to slow down its growth because it's cutting into your bottom line. That's about all. Peace out.